Hey everyone, it's Pam, and today I'm making another collection video. This time I'm going to show off all of our video game vinyl. So currently, between my boyfriend Will and I, we have about 50 video game soundtracks on vinyl. I'm gonna admit that this is mostly his hobby. I pick up a soundtrack here and there when there is one that I really like or there's a game that I uh, am a big fan of, but most of these are his, so I'm going to be showing them off, playing a little music from the soundtracks I'm talking about. Uh, a lot of this is going to be about the art, because the covers and sometimes the inserts I have can be quite gorgeous. Uh, I'm just going to talk a little bit about them. Some of them I honestly won't have too much to say about because they're games that I've never played or don't really have an attachment to, but I will give you a quick view of them anyway. And as always, let's start alphabetically. So to start off, we have The Adventures of Bayou Billy, and this is just a little wee guy. It has the soundtrack from the game. This is an interesting game. Um, it's for the NES. I haven't played through the whole thing, but it uh, sort of switches up genres quite a bit as it goes. There's some beat-em-up gameplay, there's some driving, there's some shooting. The soundtrack is similarly varied. It's kind of a funky sounding. Uh, soundtrack. Welcome to your doom. Next up is Altered Beast, and Will's left the plastic on this for some reason, which makes it a little glary, but this is a fantastic soundtrack. It's not a game that I've played a whole lot of, I've just played the first level or so, but it is a really great soundtrack. It's very sort of bassy and percussion-y. It's kind of a little bit on the spooky side. It even includes the voiceovers, the famous rise from your grave, and it has some nice artwork inside of it, which I will show you on the b-roll footage. This next one is a little hard to tell from the cover art, but it is Bastion. I think Supergiant Games makes some of the best soundtracks out there. Um, everything is written, produced, and recorded by Darren Korb, and uh, it has vocals by Ashley Barrett, and the songs that Ashley Barrett does vocals on are just so, so beautiful. I really love this soundtrack. It's got a... it's sort of changes as it goes. It has a very sort of like industrial feel at some points, at others it's a little bit twangy. Um, then it gets sort of has some like Middle Eastern kind of sounds midway through and it's just beautiful. Um, the song Build the Wall Build That Wall is just like the most beautiful song I've ever heard in a video game at all. Um, I'm sort of this is an interesting choice for what they did with the artwork on this game because the super giant games do have such a an interesting and identifiable art style and this doesn't really capture that at all it's very different but yes it's a beautiful soundtrack and definitely one that i listen to the most Next up is some Batman. This includes Batman on NES and Batman Return of the Joker. Both great soundtracks. Uh, you can see that on this album, it doesn't really ever say that it's Batman. It doesn't use official art. This isn't a particularly official release. Um, but it is a good soundtrack, particularly Return of the Joker. Um, it uses a special Sunsoft sound chip, which allowed the developers and the composers to get more out of the NES that was usually possible. So it is a great soundtrack, and the game itself also looks and plays just a little bit better at the expense of some flicker. Next up is Battletoads in Battle Maniacs, which honestly... I had never heard of this game before looking at this album. I have played the arcade version of Battletoads, and of course I know the original on NES. It's just I didn't really grow up with Super Nintendo, so not a game I'm familiar with. However, I do really like the artwork on the cover of the album, and my favorite thing is this beautiful rainbow psychedelic disc. Okay, and now we get to 700 different Castlevania soundtracks, which seems a little excessive to me, but I'll talk a bit more about that. Starting out with this, this is a Castlevania compilation, I believe, by Moonshake. It's clearly meant to look like 
The Clash is London Calling. Uh, I really like the disc. It's sort of blood splattered, which is thematically appropriate. This is Castlevania 1. Uh, really pretty artwork on all of these releases. These are from Mondo, the official ones, and I really like how the insides show the maps of the castle. Next up is, of course, Castlevania 2, Simon's Quest. This is another... Oh, these first two are smaller LPs. Again, great artwork on it. I really like the green theme here. Then we have Castlevania 3, and I really like this cover. It's a little bit on the grotesque side. So what I find with Castlevania is that while they do have some excellent tracks like Bloody Tears, they tend to reuse them and remix them, which is why I feel it's a little redundant to have all these, but, you know, collecting. And then this is Super Castlevania 4, which is a game I really like. I reviewed it a while ago. Um, some very good tracks in it. Some okay tracks, which some people don't like me to say. This is Castlevania Rondo of Blood and Castlevania Dracula X. It drives me absolutely crazy that half of this is upside down. And then... Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Is this Alucard on the front? He looks kind of girly. But other than that, this artwork in here is just beautiful. I uh, really, really like these portraits. And Symphony, of course, is also a very good soundtrack. The next one is something that everyone seems to love on NES except me. It's Contra. A cool thing about this is that it includes both the NES and the arcade soundtrack. I also love the artwork in the center here of the waterfall boss. I think that's very cool looking. We also have Contra 3, Alien Wars, and it's got a cool 80s aesthetic, which Contra kind of has anyway. Honestly, not a huge fan of these soundtracks. They try to do a drum beat in it, and they don't totally succeed at it. This is another one that I just got recently that I was very excited about, and that is Cuphead. So this isn't even the full soundtrack, it's just a selection on two discs. I really love this soundtrack, it's got a sound right out of the 30s, it's super jazzy, they use a live big band to record it. Also, just what a fantastic game, I usually shy away from anything that's too challenging, but Cuphead and its presentation and its music definitely kept me going until I had beaten everything. Next up is the shoot 'em up. Darius. So this is a very avant-garde kind of soundtrack. It's from the arcade game. In the center here, they have a big long interview with the composer, Hiseyoshi Ogura. And yes, this is a, a unique soundtrack. It's not a kind of sound and a kind of music you hear in a lot of other games, especially at this time. It was released in 1987. Next up is a really fantastic soundtrack, in my opinion. It is Donkey Kong Country. I remember I used to play Donkey Kong over at my cousin since they had a Super Nintendo, and I never did. It's just a really fun soundtrack. It's kind of funky. It's very, like, easy to bop your head to. Like the other Moonshake releases, this is emulating a famous album cover, which is Johnny Cash at San Quentin. And yeah, I really like the cover for this. I also really like the vinyl itself. It's got some yellow spatters and of course some bananas on it. And of course there's Doom. And this is a fantastic soundtrack by Mick Gordon. It's just like really satisfying heavy metal. I'm not a metal fan, but it's usually the vocals that turn me off. The actual instruments and uh, guitars are great. But this is actually the vinyl that kicked off collecting of video game soundtracks on vinyl, and I bought it myself, so I guess I only have myself to blame for uh, this collection hobby. And it's a beautiful set. It's got two discs in it. It has some beautiful sort of slip covers that it came with, which actually we don't keep in it because it just makes it a little hard to fit them into the case, but this is a fantastic soundtrack and definitely sort of gives you that blood rush of demon killing. Next up is Gradius, another shoot 'em up which is quite enjoyable. Um, I find this, 
the shoot 'em up soundtracks do kind of blend together for me, but they're generally sort of fun and upbeat, sort of electronic beats, which, you know, I can always get behind. This includes both the soundtracks to the NES version and the MSX version. And up next is Gunstar Heroes, one of the better games, I think, on the Genesis. Definitely one of the favorites that I've played, even though my Genesis knowledge isn't that big. Um, this is just a really fun game, a really fun soundtrack. Uh, the game also just looks fantastic. They do some really great things with sort of scrolling effects and things. Uh, yeah, this is a really nice set too. It comes with two vinyl and it also has some artwork in here and I'll show that off to you. And another little guy, this is the soundtrack to Kid Dracula. I actually have never played this game. I don't know a ton about it. I believe it's sort of like a Castlevania spin-off. It's also by Konami. Yeah, this is a Game Boy exclusive and since I don't play any handhelds, I really can't tell you much about it. Next thing is Killer Cuts, the arcade soundtrack to Killer Instinct. I always laugh when Will puts this one on because the first track on it, K.I. Feeling, it comes on and I immediately wonder, has someone put on an 80s aerobic video? Like, it's just, it's kind of strange. Um, I know it eventually gets into the more of the fighting music, but I always just laugh because every time that song comes on, it fools me and I go, what the heck is this? So Killer Cuts is actually a soundtrack album that was released and packaged with the game on Super Nintendo and it includes some tracks that do not get featured anywhere in the Super Nintendo or arcade versions. And this is Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past, the original Super Nintendo soundtrack. I love the artwork of this, the sort of simple pixelated link on the front, and then this beautiful illustration on the back with Koji Kondo's name embossed in gold. It also comes with some cool artwork as inserts, including maps, and I always love when maps are involved. And the record itself is probably my favorite looking of the whole collection. I really like the sort of subtle gold splatter on it. Mega Man 3, this is another sort of limited release. I'm actually questioning now why we don't have the Mega Man 2 soundtrack. I had to look up what this cover was trying to emulate, and it is a record by the Flaming Lips. Yeah, Mega Man soundtrack's always pretty strong. Editing Pam here, I think I missed holding up this game, but it is Metal Slug, which I honestly don't have a lot to say about. It was originally a Neo Geo game, haven't played much of it. It does have some nice artwork in the center here, as well as some inserts. Um, and it does have a pretty cool soundtrack. Run and guns tend to. Mortal Kombat 1 and 2, these are the soundtracks from the arcade. I feel like Mortal Kombat, both the game and the music, were so ubiquitous. Anytime you walked by an arcade in the mid-90s, these are the sounds that you heard the clearest and the loudest. So next are two volumes for the same series of games. This first one covers Ninja Gaiden 1. It's got some really nice artwork in the center here. Honestly, I don't play much Ninja Gaiden. It's too challenging for me. And then the second one is music from both Ninja Gaiden 2 and 3. They went a totally different direction for the artwork inside this one. This is Pony Island, which is another one of mine. This is an indie game that I greatly enjoyed. The soundtrack is quite electronic, and it goes from quite upbeat to very sinister, just like the game does, and just like the ponies on the actual album do. This is another one of mine, one of the early ones in the collection. This is Snatcher, and Snatcher is a fantastic game for Sega CD, and it just has such a cool, jazzy soundtrack. I really like it. There's lots of like jazz sax and synthesized sounds. Uh, it's really fun to listen to. You know, a little, a little dated, a little bit on the cheesy side, but you know, cheesy is fun sometimes, and it comes with some really beautiful artwork in inside. And another one, which is obviously paying tribute to another popular album cover. 
it's Sonic the Hedgehog, and it's obviously trying to look like Michael Jackson's Thriller. It makes a lot of sense for them to go with a Michael Jackson theme on Sonic 3 because it's pretty much been confirmed that he was an uncredited composer on the game. But wait, there's more. There's also Sonic Mania. I've really never been a fan of the Sonic series, so I don't have a whole lot to say about the Sonic Mania record. I like the artwork in it, it's very bright and colorful. We also have Sonic CD, which I have played. I kind of dig the FMV cutscenes that kick it off, but the gameplay, as with all Sonic games, just doesn't appeal to me. And now we've got some Streets of Rage. We've got Streets of Rage 1, 2, and 3. Streets of Rage are often considered some of the best video game music of all time, and I think for good reason. They're very electronic, it goes into sort of like EDM, a little bit of techno, even some trance. The first one is very good, the second one is excellent. But the third, I know it has its fans, but it's a little too experimental for me. It sounds just like a bunch of weird beeps and boops, and it doesn't really flow uh, for me. Now, I haven't played Streets of Rage 3, the game. Maybe it goes well with the gameplay, but 3 is not my favorite, but 1 and 2 are both excellent. Next is Sunset Riders, which is a fantastic, fun game that I reviewed quite a while ago. The soundtrack for this is very fitting of its western theme, and I think the packaging is very cute, with the little bullet holes in it. A nice little touch. Also, the album itself, the labels on it, show a six-shooter kind of design, which is neat. And here we have Yoshi's Island, which is one that was just added to the collection recently. This is another soundtrack composed by Koji Kondo, and I don't know, maybe it's because I just don't have that nostalgia for Super Mario World, but this is not really my favorite. Next up is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and actually, uh, the vinyl itself is sitting on the turntable right now. This is one that gets a lot of play in this house. The Turtles games tend to have really good soundtracks, though I wish there was one for Turtles in Time since that is Will's favorite game. I also really like the design of the album with the green splatter, and of course one side looks like a pizza. Next up is Thunder Force 4, and this actually has a surprising amount of music in it. Usually when I think of shoot 'em ups I think that they have a fairly limited soundtrack, you know, a couple minutes for each stage, of which there's not usually more than, you know, eight or ten maybe, but this has a very extensive soundtrack. So here's another one of my favorites. It's another one by Supergiant, and this is Transistor. Uh, Transistor, another beautiful game. I didn't particularly care for the gameplay all that much. It kind of uses a weird turn-based combat that never really meshed well with me, but it is, again, a beautiful game, both in art and in music. Um, it's about this woman, Red, who is a singer who loses her voice, and her boyfriend, who lives in this sword. And it's just another fantastic one. The music is by the same people, Darren Korb, Ashley Barrett. Anytime there's vocals, they're just so beautiful. And this one has actually been sort of coming up on Bastion for me. Uh, well, Bastion was always my favorite. The more I listen to this one, the more I love it. Uh, this is another one I will listen to quite often. And lastly, there are two compilation vinyl, and they are NES compilations. Um, they've got some cool artwork on them, but one thing that I really don't like about them is that they do not have a track list anywhere. Um, it's not on the cover, it's not on the vinyl itself, so it makes it very um, confusing to know exactly what you're listening to. Sometimes I'll listen to something, I'm like, oh, I can't, I can't place what game that is from, and it's like, well, too fucking bad. You're gonna have to look it up on the internet if you want to know what you're listening to. So yeah, this is kind of frustrating that they don't actually tell you the track list on it, but they do have some, you know, some good bangers on here. 
So just to wrap this up, I've stuck a bunch of these at the end just because I've never listened to them before. Some of them were bought just because they were on sale, including Diablo, The Last Guardian, which was a game I was excited about 20 years ago when it was announced and then lost interest in by the time it came out. Pokemon Gold and Silver, I think is what it's called. This one was not bought just because it was on sale. Will actually likes the game and the soundtrack, but I have never played it or listened to it myself. This is Revenge of Shinobi. It's got some pretty cool artwork in it. And then there is a follow-up to this. This is Shinobi 3, I think? Yeah, Shinobi 3 Return of the Ninja Master. Rocket Knight Adventures, which is a Genesis exclusive, I think, and apparently a fantastic platformer. I will have to play it at some point. And then we have the Uncharted Collection, 1, 2, and 3, and Uncharted for A Thief's End. You can tell these haven't been opened, although this one seems to have a letter in it. I wonder if I can dip it in water. And this is Velocity, which after seeing this, I looked up the game and I think I'm going to be picking it up because it looks like a lot of fun. Uh, I will listen to the soundtrack then as well. So that is it for the video game vinyl collection. Let me know in the comments what you thought. Uh, tell me what some of your favorite video game soundtracks are. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.